بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله العليم الخبير المتقن النظام العالم بلا معين ونصير فسبحان الله الذي حكمته بالغة وعلمه غزير ونعمه واصلة إلى كل صغير وكبير ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له في نقير ولا قطمير ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله الذي هدانا بكتاب منير ودعانا إلى الله بالإنذار والتبشير صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ما دامت الكواكب تسير أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وليخشى الذين لو تركوا من خلفهم ذرية ضعافا خافوا عليهم فليتقوا الله وليقولوا قولا سديدا صدق الله العظيم When things get tough the tough get going. It is better to die for a cause that will live than to live for a cause that will die. It is better to die for a cause that will live than to live for a cause that will die. With the happenings in the world, the atheist and the agnostic might argue, well, I told you from before there was no God. Doesn't the happening suggest or add to my perception of the happenings. While the turbulent world might make the munafik and the hypocrite say, I was always in doubt, and if anything, the current happenings has exacerbated my doubt. Because you can only lie when it suits you. But as soon as the pressure comes, your colors get exposed. The Arabic proverb is, عند الامتحان يكرم الرجل أو يوحان. As soon as the crunch time comes, people are separated. The truth come out on Liyamiz Allahu al-Khabitha min al-Tayyib. The pure are separated from the fake. When uh, in the occasion of Khandak, uh, and the moment was intense, and the challenges were daunting, and it was really severe, and it was icy cold, it was bone chilling. C can we just keep the background static and, and not evolving? That will be much appreciated, so it just doesn't play with uh, the mind. May Allah bless you. And so the moment was quite intense and the heat, the, the, the cold was extreme. Uh, and of course, the believers were compliant. They were obedient. And the munafiqeen now could no longer act. You could not sustain the act because the pressure was too much. Allah says the moment was so intense, the hearts had reached the collar bones. People were thinking different things, but what is happening? What is happening? And at that time, the munafiq, the hypocrite came and he said, uh, okay, oh Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, please, you've got to just give us space and give us gap. We need to go home. You know what? Uh, we need to protect our homes. Our homes are under threat. But there was no threat. In yuriduna illa firara they decided to flee the battle. So yeah, the atheist might say there was no God and uh, this is how the happenings of the world is suggesting uh, and so would be the agnostic. The munafiq, uh, as, as in the campaign of, of Uhud, in the campaign of Uhud, the Quran uses an amazing expression. So the munafiq is fake, is fake and, and that's the world we live in. Uh, in English, I, I like the proverb that goes, I like people who openly hate me, but I hate people who pretend to love me. And really today, the so-called people out there, it's more acting like you, 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 you like justice, uh, but in reality, you are more opposed to justice than anything else. Uh, neutrality at the time of injustice is of course standing with the oppressor as we know. So in the occasion of Uhud, when Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul and his comrades decided to move away and they did not support the cause and they backed off. The Quran used an amazing expression. They never had faith, but externally, superficially, outwardly, they claimed that they displayed it. But at this point, the, the display was so difficult that even outwardly, they couldn't have that superficial display. They couldn't even give an outward superficial display. And what does the believer say? 
when the moment gets so intense and so challenging and so daunting and you see these images and you see this footage and you move on because of course it just brings a tear in your eye it, it, it just wells up in your eyes it just trickles down your cheek I mean recently and I'm sure everybody any person what half a thread of humanity I, I, I seen one of the images I, I shut my phone I turned the side and I told my wife I wasn't able to speak and of course I had a lump in my throat I had a frog in my throat like anyone else and I just cried incessantly and I just sobbed my way through I was so hopeful of having a soothing dream that that's gonna give me some comfort but Allah knows best nothing of that nature happened but I slept my night just sobbing away I slept my night just sobbing away the Prophet Sallallahu was in Tabuk and then Abu Khaytham radiallahu anhu came home he had two spouses the Arab custom he had the two orchards they had prepared some food and he was just about to step in he was just about to step into the orchard and then he said Abu Khaytham fi dhillin barid wa rasulullahi fi harrin shadeed ma hadha bil insaf Abu Khaythama, your Nabi is in heat against the enemy. The odds are intense. You think you can still find time to sit and relax and have a good meal? This is not fair. He reproached himself. He challenged himself. He chastised himself. Ma kana li ahli al-madinati wa man hawlahum min al-a'rabi an yatakhallafu al rasulillah very few of us might know that the great jurist Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah was born in Gaza Muhammad bin Idris al-Shafi'i rahimahullah was born in Gaza and yearning and pining for his birthplace he had composed two couplets which probably today is in the mind of everyone around the globe وَإِنِّي لَمُشْتَاقٌ إِلَىٰ أَرْضِ غَزَّةٌ وَإِنِّي لَمُشْتَاقٌ إِلَىٰ أَرْضِ غَزَّةٌ وَلَوْ خَانَنِي بَعْدَ التَّفَرُّقِ كِتْمَانِي سَقَ اللَّهُ أَرْضًا لَوْ ظَفِرْتُ بِطُرْبِهَا كَحَلْتُ بِهِ مِنْ شِدَّةِ الشَّوْقِ أَجْفَانِي Oh my heart, how I yearn and how I pine and how I long for my birthplace, Gaza. Imam Shafi'i is saying, Sakallahu Ardan, may Allah bless the land, the occupants, and the inhabitants of this blessed land. If ever in my life the moment presents for me to lay my hands on the soil of Gaza, be rest assured I will use that as the best antimony kohol and surma that I ever applied in my eyes law zafir tu bi turbiha kahal tu bihi min shiddati shawqi ajfani the world is a troubled place my brother the world is a turbulent place my sister what a time we are living in what an era we are living in if there's one thing I can say in this entire ordeal and what we witnessing and experiencing and how turbulent the world is it's purely because of double standards in the world in which we live let, let, let's just explore that on a micro macro personal international local global stage the world is in so much mayhem lawlessness chaos and anarchy why because we have different set of rules for different people the verse I recited so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in chapter 4 says وَلْيَخْشَ الَّذِينَ لَوْ تَرَكُوا مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّةً ضِعَافًا خَافُوا عَلَيْهِمْ فَلْيَتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَلْيَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا the Quran sketches the moment the poignant moment the emotional moment where a person is about to bid farewell to his children he's on his deathbed and of course this is happening hourly if not by the minute as we speak and uh, so you are now just about to leave you just about you're on your way out life is just slipping away 
and you can see death becoming more eminent and evident and apparent. At that time, what would be the fears that would grip your heart? What would be the concerns that would envelope your heart? Appreciate the, the, the analogy of the Quran and keep the focus of what I said. The world in which we live is a troubled place. It's a turbulent place. Why is it such a troubled place? Because unfortunately we have double standards across the world. And it is because of this double standards which has resulted in abuse, exploitation, anarchy, lawlessness, chaos and mayhem. So Allah says, imagine you're on your way out and now you are going to leave behind children, minor, small, dhurriyatan vulnerable dependents, small children. What would be your hopes from society, from the neighbors, from your siblings? I just wish everyone can rally up, just mobilize and embrace these kids of mine. I look at my eight year, I look at my 12 year, and that's exactly what it, what's been happening to everyone. When you look at these children, obviously, and then you ask yourself, you know, as they always say, there's a difference between human being and being human. We are human beings, but we're definitely not being human. Can you imagine you have to negotiate and impress and argue and rally and mobilize to say, let's stop killing humans. Mankind must end war, otherwise war will end mankind. And that's exactly where the world is heading. The Prophet ﷺ said, before Qiyamah, Haraj will become common. O Nabi of Allah, what is Haraj? Qatil. La yadri al-qatil fi maqatil. Wal al-maqtul fi maqutil. The murderer won't know why I'm murdering. The murdered won't know why I'm being murdered. People will just become bloodthirsty. People will just become bloodthirsty. So at that time, your hope, your dream, your aspiration that if society can just rally and embrace my child and give him shelter and comfort. Allah says, the hope you have from others to embrace your children, if your eyes were to close, well then do the same for your brother whose eyes have closed and embrace his children. Hada aslun azimun min babil akhlaq the Quran sets a precedent and that we can we can we can we can extend the the implications of this right across and I, I do a lot of marriage counseling I do a lot of other type of counseling and I, and I keep on saying to each one momentarily can you just look through the lenses uh, of your spouse of your better half of your employer, of your employee, J -j just for a moment, see if you're on this end here, how would you view the scenario? If you were on the side of receiving this type of abuse and this type of bombardment, what would be your, your, your psyche? What would be your mindset? And that's what a believer needs to think. Think for the next person. Mufti Taqi Hafizahullah once wrote an article uh, and he wrote about the harms of gossip and he said this is repugnant, deplorable, detestable and impermissible and unlawful social we, we, uh, gossip and, and, and backbiting is not permissible. So some so-called professor kind of retorted and responded to his article and he said if uh, backbiting is so bad then there'll be no flavor in our social gatherings. If backbiting is so forbidden and unlawful, then what do we do in a social gathering? You, you, you know, the flavor, the excitement, the thrill is, is the chit chat and the backbiting. So he said, okay, point taken. We're telling you now, next week we're having a banquet, we're having a meal, and we will be gossiping, but you're not invited because the gossip is about you. And as soon as he felt the heat and he felt the pressure, and it was directed, he said, apologies, I appreciate why Islam has made it unlawful. So it's very easy to be sitting on a position when you don't feel the heat. The, 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 what's the Gujarati proverb? Jinu godru jai in a Jinu godru jai in a The one who loses his quilt and his duvet and his blanket feels the cold. Well, Islam teaches you, imagine the one who lost it. Sayyidina Yusuf, 
has assumed the throne of Egypt. The seven years of famine and drought. He makes a royal decree for seven years. In this palace, we will only be eating one meal, though we have surplus provision, so we can appreciate the gravity and the intensity of the adversity of the subjects. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given the preference and the privilege of prophethood inevitable. But then he was told you could choose that prophethood with an empire or choose it with poverty. If Allah told him that if you take poverty, then you'll get prophethood, you could appreciate it. And if you opt for kingdom and an empire, you will not be privileged with the station of prophethood. But that wasn't said to the Prophet ﷺ. It was said to him in Shaita Nabiya Malika, in Shaita Nabiya Abda. Prophethood has been decreed and, and, and ordained and assigned for you. Allahu a'lamu haythu yaj'alu risalata wa rabbuka yakhluku ma yasha'u wa yakhtar wallahu yakhtassu bi rahmatihi man yasha'u allahu yastafi min al-malaikati rusulan wa min al-nas These are different verses kind of directing to the same point that how Allah selects for the station of prophethood and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said bal nabiyyan abda a prophet and a servant one day I will eat and I'll be grateful and then the other day I won't eat and I will think of those who don't ever eat. Surely my brother, the world in which we're going, any person with half a thread of humanity has to be asking himself some tough questions, some serious questions. I need to bring a pause and a halt. I need to reset my coordinates. I need to check where's my navigation going. I have to change my direction. So much happening at such an intensity, at such a gravity, in such succession, at such a large scale, and what a world in which we are living. What a world in which we are living. So, yeah, the problem is double standards. The Quran says regarding Pharaoh, listen to this, Inna fir'awna ala fil ard. He was rebellious. Wa ja'ala ahlaha shi'a. He categorized people in different castes. Yeah? He categorized people in different castes. One out of them were downtrodden. They were not downtrodden. He perceived them to be downtrodden. I don't want to go into academics. So, istakbaru is in an active verb while ustudrifu is in a passive so passive meaning they were not weak they were perceived to be weak majhul those that are into arabic grammar and linguistics you know grammarians philologists will tell you what i'm saying to appreciate the context of the ayah the arrogant and the haughty said not to the weak to those who were perceived weak Follow my pattern of thoughts. He considered a group from amongst them to be of a subclass. He mercilessly would kill, would massacre, would butcher, would slaughter tens of hundreds of thousands of children. Musa alayhi salatu was salam changing strides momentarily but within the focus on a particular instance again standing for justice standing for justice and this is important as Muslims we need to oppose injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere injustice anywhere is a threat to in, uh, is a threat to justice anywhere injustice needs to be eliminated Then there would be peace and harmony. One diplomat came to look to meet Sayyidina Umar. So he said, where is your ruler? He said, yeah, just go outside Medina. I'll be sleeping under the tree. So he came and Sayyidina Umar was resting. But of course, the, the, the awe of Sayyidina Umar was inspiring. And Umar radiallahu was taking his midday siesta. So he came and he looked at Umar. He said, Adalda, fa'aminta, fa'nimta. Adalda, fa'aminta, fa'nimta. There's so much justice in your land. 
so you can sleep anywhere peacefully so it's so tranquil to reside in your neighborhood adalta fa aminta fa nimta a tyrant never gets away you can run but you will burn out there's no doubt however allah's system before you lose hope and i lose focus of dismantling tyranny and oppression has always been gradual if you're familiar with quran and sunnah you will know that allah has never out of his wisdom and infinite knowledge seized a tyrant instantly his system of bringing an end to the empire of tyranny has always been gradual inna allah la yumli adh-dhalim hatta idha akhadhahu lam yuflithu thumma tala wa kadhalika akhadhu rabbika idha akhadha al-qura wa hiya dhalima inna akhadhahu alim shadid so musa alayhi salatu was salam one day comes out and 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 you know sometimes there is injustice happening in our own circles in our own homes in our own environments in our own institutions uh, allah taala abhors it in every level Pe people ask the question especially well if if there is a god and there is a being and of course there is and allah is omnipresent and he is absolutely sovereign then why doesn't he hold the hand of the oppressor when he oppresses well then that should also apply to you why doesn't allah chop your tongue when you speak a lie why doesn't allah seize your vision when it roams why doesn't allah sever your hearing ability when you abuse it to anyone and everyone who abuses any power if that's the benchmark of establishing the existence of the almighty then he ought to strike in this world instantly but of course that's not the system of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has a greater plan and he knows the ultimate place is akhirah and there everyone will be brought to justice so hajjaj bin yusuf i come back to my point hajjaj bin yusuf uh, said to sa'id bin jubair ayu khulafa ibni umayya a'jabu indak which of the rulers of banu umayya impress you the most so he said ardahum li khaliqihim the one amongst them that pleases allah the most so hajjaj said fa ayyuhum arda lil khaliq so amongst all the 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 banu umayya dynasty which one out of them has pleased allah the most so sa'id ibn jubair said ilmu dhalika inda alladhi ya'lamu sirrahum wa najwahum can we just uh, give some comfort to our little boys there inshallah mashallah may allah bless you the one which one out of them has pleased allah the most so sa'id ibn jubair said the knowledge of that is known to allah so hajjaj bin yusuf was now provoking him provoking him he said no no i want to know your opinion about me what's your opinion about me as a ruler so sa'id ibn jubair said and it, it was known about him that you know what he was safaq he had claimed the lives of many people of course he had performed certain good actions as well historically it's rec recorded and documented but this is also a historical captured fact that he he had claimed the lives of many many people so he asked sa'id bin jubair what's your opinion about me so sa'id bin jubair said anta a'lamu bi nafsik you know yourself better if you steal or you usurp or you claim or you extort by allah in whose control is my life you can never be sleeping peacefully at night you might act you might claim you might display you might argue you might counter argue but within yourself you are in absolute misery thumma anzala alaykum min ba'dil ghamm amanatan nu'asa yaghsha ta'ifatan minkum wa ta'ifatun qad ahammathum anfusuhum yadunnuna billahi ghayra alhaqq dhann aljahiliya in the campaign of uhud the sahaba were there in the thick of the campaign allah gave them sleep and slumber amidst the battlefield which is so foreign and alien to a fighting field that allah gave them sleep how do you reconcile sleep 
in, 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 a, in a battleground. It's, it's like the most alien, it's, you know, pulls apart. You, you, you cannot even process the concept in theory. You got an interview the next day and you insomniac the night preceding it. Can you imagine that this is a verse of the Quran in Uhud? Allah gave tranquility. Allah gave peace. Allah just gave calmness and serenity to them. And the munafiqeen who were there, they were gripped in anxiety. They were restless. They were turbulent. They were uneasy. They were restless. They were pacing all around. And the believers, they were at peace. They were tranquil. That's divine. That's divine. That's from the Almighty. ثُمَّ أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ الْغَمِّ أَمَنَةً And then after all the grief and the difficulty, the adversity and the difficulty, we send down peace and tranquility upon them. يَغْشَى طَائِفَةً مِّنْهُمْ Which then overwhelmed and enveloped them and it just gave them so much peace and serenity. So Sa'id ibn Jubair said to Hajjaj bin Yusuf, you know what you are. I don't have to tell you what you are. You know your own state. You know your own state. You know, during the, the great lie, as the Quran refers to it, the great lie. Yeah, the great lie. What's the great lie? The fabrication and the accusation against the honorable consort of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, the Quran referred to it as if the great lie. And the other day I just stumbled over this text, which I've read all along, but suddenly it just had relevance to modern day media for me. So, Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul starts the agenda of accusing. The Prophet ﷺ is coming back from a campaign and Aisha radiallahu anha uh, went to relieve herself and in the process she lost her pendant and uh, she would be seated on the hoda, on the seat on the camel and then she would be taken the authentic hadith of Bukhari the women were very light at that time and Aisha radiallahu was very light and, and, and gentle and soft in her physique so those that were in charge of the caravan assumed that, that she was on but she was not on and they went and whereas she went to relieve herself and she came back and she observed that she had lost her pendant so she went back to look for it when she came back the entire caravan had left look at her inter intellect and on a side note let me say this here to those you know what uh, evil haters who choose to tarnish or blemish the reputation of Islam and who who want to bring into disrepute uh, the impeccable legacy of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and want to use the condescending words which have no connotations to the richness of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of pedophile remember Aisha radiallahu anha was not your regular nine-year-old she was not your average nine-year-old she was not your common nine-year-old she was a caste above the rest her intellect, her fortitude, her vision, her wisdom, her, her maturity was just above all. This is a young woman wedded and married to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The entire caravan has left. She's alone in this plane. She came back and she says, oops, they're gone. At some point they will realize I'm not with them. The first point of reference will be to trace back where they lost me. So let me just be stationary at this place. So when they realize, they come back here. Wow. Then you want to say that this is a regular nine-year-old. And this is, this, is, this is just, by the way, I'm saying, read her whole life and you will know how rich and how wholesome and how amazing she was. You try and you lose your spouse at, at the airport or at the parking lot or in a mall and there's no signal and you see the chaos. But I came and you went up and I went up the lift and you came down and I, oh my word. وَكَانَ الصَّفْوَانْ بِنْ مُعَطَّلْ ثُمَّ السُّلَمِي Safwan bin Mu'attal radhi anhu, he was in charge of coming and just checking and when he came فَرَآ سَوَادَ insanin. he just seen the shape of a person فَاسْتَرْجَ إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ وَكَانَ قَدْ رَآنِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يُضْرَبَ الْحِجَاب read the words man how amazing she says he had seen me prior to the rules of hijab and screening 
So he knew who I was and he was aware of my appearance. So he's seen and immediately he diverted his gaze and he just said, Inna lillah. He dropped the seated the camel, anakha in Arabic as you would say. And then I sat down and then when talaqa yaud, he held the reins. Wallahi ma yukallimuni kalima. He didn't utter a word or a letter to me. He walked right till we came to Medina. But of course, the people sitting in ambush who are waiting, who are stalking, who are sensationalizing, who are thriving on this year. Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul found something to now create a chit chat and a gossip and sensationalize and give it momentum. So he started bringing this about in Medina. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, there's something happening. There's something happening. And it continued for one month. Allah's plan is perfect. Allah's knowledge is complete. Every time I begin to process the gravity of this trial, my brain shuts off. Can you imagine this one month? Allah knows Aisha radiallahu anha is innocent. She knows she's innocent. The Sahaba knows she's innocent. The Prophet of Allah knows she's innocent. But because there was no intervention of revelation, the evil elements of hypocrisy were thriving and exploiting and giving momentum. Can you imagine the, the awkward moments? Allah could have lambasted him and exonerated Aisha radiallahu anha on day one. Back off. Zip your mouth. This is a lie. She's pure. She's chaste. She's noble. She's wholesome. But a month had lapsed. Can you imagine how long that month was? Can you imagine how long that month was? I keep on saying to my youngsters and other youth, you know, you out and you don't answer your phone and your dad is trying to get all over you and you say, oh, sorry, there was no signal. I say in those three hours of panic and uncertainty, you made your dad age three years. Mashallah to our Nasheed artists. May Allah bless you for those amazing emotional couplets about parents. Oh, my mind is racing. So much time has gone. I, I, I don't even take up so much time, but uh, whatever comes in my mind. Someone paying tribute to the father said, جو اپنا سر اتا کر میں میرے والد نے مجھے آج اس قابل بنایا ہے وہ تے محروم تعلیم سے مگر مجھ کو پرہایا ہے Though my father within his own space was a humble, simple, ordinary, average individual He didn't have anything amazing And I can say that about my honorable, venerable dad And I'm sure many of you would say that they came from humble beginnings, but they instilled values in us. They shaped us in a way that was just unique. And I mean, till today, I've said it in so many of my talks, Allah has allowed me to travel the globe and speak at so many events of tens of thousands of people in oratory for the last 25 years. My biggest mentor has been my dad without exception. For 15 years in my 25 years, he would just critique me. And sometimes I would come home and just sob, I would just sob. No, your body language is not right. Your choice of words are not right. Your expressions are not right. Your face is not cheerful. My wife would comfort me and say, just, just take it easy. Papa means well. Papa means well. He wants to shape you for the better. And every time he would critique me, just what, two, a year or two years ago, I was giving a talk in a large audience and my dad was there. And casually, I was just pacing the podium and my hand just went in my pocket. And as I completed the talk, everyone greeting you and lauding you and extolling your praises. And he said, boy, that's the last your hands ever go in your pocket while giving a talk. Boy, that's the last your hand. That, that body language was arrogant, my son. That body language was arrogant. May Allah bless them. And I keep on saying to my parents, I say the thing that I fear the most is when they will be gone. Who will tell me? There might be others to tell me because I need to be told, but I won't be convinced on the sincerity of the motive. There'll be a lot to tell me. I don't know if it's diluted with jealousy or hatred or sincerity or nobility. But when my parents tell me, I know there's no doubt other than my interest. And I say to the youth all the time, I say, see, your parents can err 
in what they said, but they will never err in the motive of what they said. As a parent, I could be, I could make a mistake in the advice I gave you because I, I'm, I'm fallible myself. I'm not infallible, I'm fallible myself. But, but nothing inspired me to give you that advice other than your interests. So you can't flaw my motivation. You could probably argue my counsel. And that's, that, that, that's, that's, that's you know, the, the, the fallibility and the vulnerability that every person has. Anyway, my dad himself didn't have the education. That's what the poet is saying. But he left no stone unturned to empower me, to educate me. And I think this is where we lost the generation. We tried to compensate by giving our children what we didn't have. But in the process, we forgot to give them what we had. So listen, I didn't know what was a holiday. Hey, my son, go for a holiday. Listen, I didn't know what was this luxury. I, I, I couldn't dream of this year, but I need to give you. So I want to compensate for what I didn't have. But hang on, I had a value. I had respect. I mean, I've said this in, in, in many of my talks as kids. You know what, in, in the neighborhood there, there was a little uh, public swimming pool. And so we asked the permission to say we're going to swim. And uh, it was just that, no, there's no need to swim. Just sit here and play. Why do you want to go swim? And you know that rebellious nature, no, what are they depriving us? We're going to swim. And we barely took a turn around the block. And we said, hey, folks, I'm, I'm talking now, probably 1980, 80, early 80s, whatever. We said, hey, you know what? Our parents are not happy. Perhaps one of us will drown. That, that, that was the mindset that if there isn't blessings from your dad, you, you, you can't venture. It, it's, it's taken one step forward and ten steps back. So we gave our children what we didn't have, but we failed to give them what we had, and that was values. That was respect. My dad and my mom would labor and toil to just give me a better life. Today I can rub shoulders with the elite and the ordinary. I can stand with the prominent and the average. It's all credit to the nurturing and the upbringing of our beloved parents. Those from amongst them who are alive, may Allah preserve them with goodness. And those that have moved on, may Allah elevate their abode in Jannah. May Allah bless you for those uh, emotional couplets. Uh, it's, it's, it's always, uh, you know, poignant. And, and, and emotional anyway so I was saying to you and we'll come back to focus it just you know I might throw different ideas and thoughts but if you put the puzzle together inshallah it's relevant to 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 the happenings uh, I, I, I think the, the the overarching topic for today is double standards from simple to 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 right on the global stage here and that's why the world is in 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 the misery in which it is because we don't have one set of rules that governs everyone that's why it is uh, the hadith is in Bukhari. A person said, I met Abu Dhar at Rabda. So I said, Abu Dhar? Now him and his slave were clad and attired in the same thing. Master and slave were attired in the absolute same garment. So I'm like, is he promoted or are you demoted? You know, you, you like to distinguish yourself in everything. Authority is dangerous. My dad, may Allah bless him in our family group. He keeps on telling us, even today he posted, said, my children, authority. I'm 80 years of age. I've seen a lot in life. I've seen very few who survived the test of authority. Watch your body language. Watch how you talk. Watch how you behave. Those that are there are not there forever. Uh, the ulama say, إِنَّ الْأَيْدِ أَلَّتِي أَلْقَتْ يُوسُفْ فِي الْبِئْرِ نَفْسَ الْأَيْدِ أَلَّتِي إِمْتَدَّتْ إِلَيْهِ ذَلِيلًا as Manana was saying, it's not easy for someone to stretch their hand. The ulama say the very hands who dropped Yusuf in the well with the passage of time, those same hands came to that same Yusuf with the begging bowls. So don't flex your muscle too much. Don't be too loud. Don't be too haughty. Or don't be haughty at all. And I'm talking to myself first, not to you. I'm ad addressing myself because things can change. So 
Someone asked Abu Dhar, like you and your servant and your slave are clad in the same thing? Ah, well, what's this? He said, Ayyartuhu bi umme. I had just taunted him about his mum. Abu Dhar is a giant, he's a legend, he's a great companion, he's a stalwart, radiallahu anhu, he's a devout companion, may Allah be pleased with him. What a great companion, radiallahu I said, Yabna Sauda, oh, the son of a dark skinned woman. The hadith is in Bukhari. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya Abu Dharrin inna kamru'un fi kajahiliya. Abu Dhar, Abu Dhar, Abu Dhar, am I getting the stench of ignorance emitting from you? But what are those utterances? That's repugnant. That's unacceptable. Now, the academics and scholars will appreciate. Hafiz ibn Hajar writes something just next level. It's again in Arabic, so I'm, I'm, it's, it's difficult to simplify the richness and the beauty of this phrase. So, in kana lafzul hadith yashtari tu iqtida al muasat lal musawat. In kana lafzul hadith yaqtadi ishtirat al muasat lal musawat. The Prophet said, that's your brother, treat him like you're saying, give him from what you wear, let him eat from what you... What did I say? Reverse yourself, put yourself on the receiving end. And then he process it. So the hadith did not impress literally that you must give him the same, meaning in a figurative context, dignify him, privilege him, honor him. But as a word of precaution, the noble companion took it in his literal sense and he would then empower and enrich his, his servant and his slave by wearing the absolute same dress and garment and outfit and uniform like himself. Ask yourself in every setting, you've betrayed your spouse, you're asking her to forgive you or you're asking him to forgive you. Just reverse the role and say if you were on the receiving end of this betrayal, how would you deal with such a situation? If each one of us in every stage and phase, okay, let's come back to this incident and try and make some progress. So Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul starts giving momentum to the slander, the great lie, the great lie. The Quran calls it the great lie. Inna alladheena jaa'u bil if. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ جَاءُوا بِالْإِفْكِ عُصْبَةٌ مِّنْكُمْ لَا تَحْسَبُوهُ شَرًّا لَكُمْ بَلْ هُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ لِكُلِّ امْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ مَكْتَسَبَ مِنَ الْإِثْ وَالَّذِي تَوَلَّى كِبْرَةٌ مِّنْهُمْ لَهُ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Those who produce and invented and fabricated the great lie. So... For one month, the media was thriving and sensationalizing this topic. I'm not sure. I don't know. Perhaps speculations suggest, rumors have it, the news have it, articles suggest, he's seen, she's seen, they say, he say, we heard. One month it's going on. After one month, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam finally had a direct sit down. And of course, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew that Aisha radiallahu anha was innocent, but because this thing was going on for so long, Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasallam respectfully uh, engaged Aisha radiallahu anha in the presence of her father. I cannot begin to imagine the gravity of this test. If my, my brain shuts off. My brain shuts off. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Oh Aisha, in kunti bari'a fasayubarri ikillah. There's this talk that is going around. There's this rumors that are circulating. If you are innocent, and that's what we believe and hope, it's just a matter of time, and Allah will announce your innocence. Allah will exonerate you. Allah will prove your innocence. And if perchance a mistake has occurred, then the doors of Tawbah are open. Now, when I was telling you my mother Aisha and your mother Aisha and the consort of the Prophet Wasallam was not your regular nine-year-old when she came into the wedlock, or, or, or when the union was consummated, uh, then, then process what she said. And in my humble thoughts, you could apply it to mass media today. She said, she looked at the father Abu Bakr and she said, speak. Said, oh, my, my daughter, what do I say? 
looked at her mom on my Roman speak my daughter, what do I say? Then she said, Lakad Samiatum Hada Hattas Takarrafi Nufusikum. Fellow Kultu Anni Baria, Wallahu Yalamu Anni Baria, La to Saddikuni. Walla Inia Taraf to Lakum be Amrin, Wallahu Yalamu Anni Baria, La to Saddikuni. لا أجد لي ولكم مثلا إلا كما قال أبو يوسف فصبر جميل. By Allah, the story has been given so much momentum that it has become embedded in. This is a young girl talking. Listen, I'm reading this and I'm saying, Allah, this is mass media today. By Allah, the story and this rumor has been circulated so widely. That it has become edged in the minds and embedded in the hearts that if I were to tell you I'm innocent, people will have difficulty in buying my innocence because of the extent of its circulation. And at that time, it wasn't the tools through which you could circulate it. It was just word of mouth from one to another. And if I were to tell you I am innocent and Allah knows I'm innocent, you will never buy my innocence because you've been hearing contrary to my innocence for so long. So I'm saying nothing other than I find solace in the tale, the story and the narrative of the father of Yusuf. She said, I was so overwhelmed by the moment. Momentarily, I forgot the name of Yaqub alayhi salam. So I said, I find solace in the tale of the narrative of the father of Yusuf. And she said, for sabrun jameel. And we looked at the Prophet of Allah and we realized revelation was in process. My word, your heart will burst asunder. وَتَحْسَبُونَهُ هَيَّا هَيِّنَا وَهُوَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَظِيمٌ And remember the moment when you circulated the great lie and casually it was just as they say مُتَدَاوِلْ بَيْنَ الْأَلْسِنَا From one tongue to another, just forward, just communicate, just transmit, just pass on. وَتَحْسَبُونَهُ هَيِّنَا you trivialize the offense. You didn't make much of it. You didn't realize whose honor. And of course, it was the munafiqeen. Tawalla kibrahu. They gave momentum to this year. Innocent people also had fallen prey because of the overwhelming nature of the propaganda. There is no honest media left. It's just commercial airspace. It's just commercial airtime. It's just propagandist. But in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this was the most heinous and horrendous of crimes. Okay, coming back to the point I was saying, uh, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, I said, double standards. This has just plagued the world. You can see what's happening, that, that the lives of some matter and the lives of others don't matter. Now listen to this here, and I will try and move you know, to a close because so much time has been taken. May Allah bless you all. Uh, on a side note, I want to make a compliment to the One Nation. It's my first interaction with them. Uh, and in particular, I would like to acknowledge Molana Samir. Uh, I've just arrived two, three days ago and I've interacted with them. The internal mutual brotherhood is something that will live with me. I must compliment and I say, may Allah bless you people. Say Allahu Akbar. The unity is just unique. The brotherhood is just amazing. The togetherness is really great. And something that I really uh, acknowledge and appreciate of Maulana Samir, he was uh, very bold in complimenting everyone. And that's the spirit of a leader. The Prophet of Allah was just not generous by wealth. He was generous by spirit. Some people are generous by wealth, but not by spirit. What do I mean? Let me unpack. They can give a lot of money, but they cannot praise anyone. The Prophet of Allah was generous by spirit. 
he could praise his wife so freely, so openly, so casually. He could praise his companions. He could praise the other Sahaba. Uh, uh, an insecure person feels threatened. In English, the proverb is, a proud person feels injured when others are praised. He feels violated. He feels intimidated. He feels injured. That's a blast to his ego. But the Prophet of Allah praised the people so much. The books of Hadith have chapters. Babu Manaqib Aisha. Babu Manaqib Khadija. Babu Manaqib Bayhat al Ridwan. Babu Manaqib. Whole chapter. The veterans of Badr were like this. The participants of Uhud were like this. When they took the pledge, the Hadith of Sahih Muslim, 1400 under the tree. Laqad Radi Allahu. Laqad Radi Allahu Anil Mu'minina. إذ يبايعونك تحت الشجرة فعلم ما في قلوبهم فأنزل السكينة عليهم وأثابهم فتحا قريبا ومغانم كثيرة يأخذونها وكان الله عزيزا حكيما They waiting to make umrah They've been denied to make Umrah. The prejudice, bias, bigotry of the disbelievers of Mecca had surpassed every level of comprehension. It was just insane, ludicrous, and bizarre. That the Prophet of Allah said, okay, let's write a document. Bukhari first volume, Kitabu Shurut. This is a document between Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the people of Mecca. They said, no, 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 no. Don't come put your titles here. You are the prophet of Allah. Yeah. Please, you must call yourself Muhammad, the servant, the son of Abdullah. As soon as you come with these titles, we will tear up this entire document. They denied the Umrah. This was the bigotry displayed. The prophet of Allah is calm and composed. He said, as long as they don't tell me to disobey Allah, I will negotiate everything. The moment was so daunting. The moment was so intense. The moment was so challenging that Umar took Abu Bakr one side. Abu Bakr, can I talk to you? Can I have a word with you? Alasna ala al-haqqi wa hum ala al-batil? But is it not that Islam is absolute and that's falsehood? Abu Bakr said yes. He said, then why such one-sided compromise? And Abu Bakr radiallahu told Umar, this is the Nabi of Allah. He's under revelation. He won't disobey Allah. That is why the ulama say, the Prophet ﷺ said, if there was a prophet after me, it would have been Umar. And the following statement is what the scholars say. There's not a hadith. Let me be clear on this. I don't want to my words and I don't want anyone to take it out of context. There's not a hadith. But the scholars say, based on the proximity of Abu Bakr to the Prophet of Allah, that if there had to be a prophet with the prophet of Allah, it would have been Abu Bakr. Like in the other times, there were multiple prophets at one time. Sayyidina Musa and Harun were in the same time. Sayyidina Musa والسلام, told his brother that uh, fi qawmi wa aslih wa la al -mufsidin. So then Umar, Sayyidina Uthman was sent to negotiate an Umrah and a safe passage and it was denied. And then the rumor was circulated that Sayyidina Uthman was assassinated. Can you imagine the test? One upon one upon one upon one. But that is Iman. Alladheena stajabu lillahi wal rasooli min ba'di ma asabahum al qarh lillatheena ahsanu minhum wattaqaw أجر عظيم الذين قال لهم الناس إن الناس قد جمعوا لكم فخشوهم فزادهم إيمانا. Some words cannot be translated like barakah. There's no translation to it. You have to live it. You can call it blessings. You can call it multiple. You can call it surplus. You can call it excess. That's an endeavor to try and translate. Barakah is divine. Iman is divine, submission is divine, strength is divine. You cannot explain and reconcile those who were injured, who were bruised, who were maimed. And then people said, hey, you know what? 
they mobilizing against you again. You better take shelter. You better take cover. They said, our shelter is with Allah always. وَلَمَّا رَأَى الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الْأَحْزَابِ قَالُوا هَذَا مَا وَعَدَنَا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَصَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَمَا زَادَهُمْ إِلَّا إِيمَانًا وَتَسْلِيمًا The rumor was circulated that Sayyidina Uthman has been assassinated. The Nabi of Allah sat beneath the tree. 1400 Sahaba came and put their hand in the hand of the Prophet Can you begin to process the richness of that moment? 1400 companions coming and pledging their allegiance to the Prophet of Allah under the tree, placing their hands in his blessed hand. And he said, Antum khayru ahlil ard. O oh my Sahaba, today you 1400 mark the noblest of humans inhabiting Mother Earth in its entirety. The planet in its entirety doesn't have better population than you 1400. The Nabi of Allah was generous. He could acknowledge, he could praise, he could laud, he could compliment, he could extol the praises. So may Allah bless them for the great work, for the sterling endeavors, for the spirit of reaching out to help, to empower. May Allah increase them in muhabba. Let me try and, and, and bring it to a close. May Allah bless you for your patience and may Allah put it on our scale of good deeds and forgive us for our shortcomings. Ah. So I was saying to you in the story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam in my opening comments and we'll try and try uh, conclude it and you know, bring it to a a, a general overarching conclusion. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam came out and then of course there was a person from his tribe and there was a person from the opponent, a, 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 a Coptic and then there was an Israelite, Sibti and a Qibti in the, in the text of the Quran in chapter 28, Surah Qasas, Allah speaks about it. So they were having a feud, they were having an argument, there was an altercation. So the Sibti, the Israelite called out to Musa and he said, oh Musa please come and help me, please come and help me. So Musa Salam came and he helped him because he was the victim. He was the victim, right? If you're not careful, the media will have you loving the victor and hating the victim. That's media. So Musa Salam came, he heard the merits of the case and he seen this man was on the receiving end and then he disciplined the perpetrator and then he gave him a little punch and it proved to be more fatal than intended and inadvertently he floored the person and it actually claimed his life. And the Quran goes on to say immediately he lamented and regretted that I didn't mean that, I just wanted to discipline him. I'm, I'm going to end now very shortly inshallah. So Musa alayhi salam helped this person, granted him deliverance from the abuse and the perpetrator and the advancement of his opponent. The next day, Musa Ali Sam comes out. Now, of course, there's news around who killed this person. So Musa Ali Sam did not maliciously, deliberately kill this person. It was unintentional. It was inadvertent. It was helping someone and the blow was more fatal than intended. So the victim did not obviously, uh, you know, tell anyone because it was in his interest that Musa Ali Salam rescued him. But the next day Musa Ali Salam came out and the same person who he aided yesterday was now having a go with someone else. So Musa Salam said to him, Inna kala mubin. Hey, but you got a problem with everyone. You got a problem with everyone. And he was part of the tribe of Musa Salam. He was the Bani Israel. So the Mufassirin write that the galaxy of the prophets were inspired by justice even if they had to pull their own ones out. We sometimes can speak out and come to the defense because you know what, you're crossing the line with my brother or my blood or my tribe or my family. But what about when the wrong is within your own? Are you just so loud? Are you just so vocal? Are you just so vociferous? Or is that you sweeping under the carpet? Islam opposes oppression, tyranny, exploitation, abuse in every form. Fihim, la yakunu fihim asabiyyatun qawmiyya. 
in the group of Ambiya, there is no asabiya, there's no prejudice, there's no bigotry, there's no being biased. If you were, if you were a victim yesterday, I aided you. But if you're a victim today and you're a perpetrator, then I need to call you out. Fast forward. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam comes and I'll leave you with this and you can put your thinking cap on and you can dot the lines. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam comes to Pharaoh to give him the dawat as Allah had sent him and assigned him. So when he comes to Pharaoh and he gives Pharaoh the dawat, you know what does Pharaoh say to him? My word. But Musa, you shouldn't be talking about anything because you know what? You've killed one person. You've killed a person. How can you talk? Pharaoh, whose entire existence is stained with blood, head to toe. Though the man is drowning in the blood of tens of thousands of children. And you have the audacity to blow the so-called whistle and put Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. These are the words of the Quran. You know what you're up to. You know what you did. You know where you were. You know what you did. Alama Abu Hassan Ali Nadwi writes in Qasr so beautiful in, in, in the response of Sayyidina Musa. He says that Amalta Qawmi Mu'amalat al-Hamiri wa dawab wa kunta tazjuruhum zajr al-kilab wa kunta tasumuhum su'a al-adhab fa ayyu fadlin laka idha kafalta tiflam minhum wa thalika aydan an khata'in wa jahlin O Pharaoh, you butchered my nation. You massacred my people. You destroyed my community. You exploited my people. And then you point in fingers towards me that I had claimed the life of one person which was unintentional, not premeditated, not precalculated. Yours was deliberate. Yours was malicious. Yours was intended. What an irony of a situation. But that is the type of, of oppression that happens in the world. In the end, as someone said, the victim says, it's not the tyranny of the tyrant that hurts us, but it is the silence of our allies that will live with us forever. May Allah bless you all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.